Hi, I'd like to talk to you about abortion today. I know there are people out there who feel very strongly one way or the other about abortion. I thought about abortion for decades now. Um, and <clears throat> so I'd like to uh, share with you some thoughts I have on this topic. Um, for a very, very long time in America, abortion was illegal. And so uh, women who needed abortion um, either had to find a place in the U.S. or outside the U.S. where they could uh, get an abortion either legally or, or illegally, or they would be um, they might consider trying to self-induce an, uh, an abortion or something like that, or they might have their baby and then kill it or throw it away. All of which are horrible options, but I think um, throwing away your baby. I mean, there have been babies found in in garbage cans and dumpsters and stuff like that. And I think that's just, it, it shows something's very broken about that person, um, within that person, I should say. I am not going to address the religious arguments revolving around abortion because I, well, I'm a deist. I don't believe in religions. And um, I don't really feel that I that this is something that this is an argument that can be won. Um, so I'm going to stick with the other things. So anti-abortion people or pro-lifers, um, uh, there they come in two stripes basically. They're the ones who will uh, stand outside of abortion and yell and scream and de and be so nasty to you, they'll make you feel guilty, they'll make you feel like the like uh, a piece of crap on somebody uh, on the sole of somebody's shoe. And these are the kinds of pro-lifers that should shut up and go away. I feel very, very strongly about this. You do not have the right to bully somebody like that. You do not have the right. You don't know why they're going into the clinic. They could be going in there for non-abortion reasons. You do not have knowledge of their case, why they're choosing to have abortion. You are being so presumptuous and arrogant, shut up and stay away from the abortion clinics, or at the very least, be respectful. Whew. I can't I can't tell you how strongly I feel about that. Then there are the other pro-lifers, and these are the people who are respectful of other people, but don't agree with the decision. Look, um, there are men and women on both sides of the aisle, uh, so to speak, and it doesn't... Um, it is. It tends not to be an easy thing to discuss, simply because people tend to have very strong feelings. And some people have irrationally strong feelings about the topic and are not willing to listen. This message really isn't for people who don't want to listen. Anti-abortion people look at uh, the baby inside, the, if, whether it's an em embryo or a fetus, as a human life that has the same rights as a baby that's already been born. But we have to remember that a baby that hasn't been born yet is not fully developed. Now, <coughs> with intensive pre uh, sorry, um, intensive care for preemies or premature babies, um, many of them can survive, although some of them will struggle throughout their life with um, disabilities or uh, and a weakened immune system and other problems. Uh, I'm I'm not really inclined to agree with having a late term abortion. I I think that you know if if you were going to if you wanted to do it, you should have done it in the beginning, when it was still like an embryo or maybe the first twelve weeks or or something like that. But to to wait until the last, uh, I guess, three months, perhaps, of the uh, baby's life, uh, the embryo's, uh, fetus's life, in your in your belly, or somebody else's belly, 
I think that's really... And, and again, there could be extenuating circumstances that force that person to wait that long. But I think, in general, uh, having an abortion that late, if there aren't extenuating circumstances, is not acceptable. Um, because, you know, that baby is so close to being born and so close to being fully developed that really you are, in essence, you are killing a baby. Um, you are killing somebody. Now, if you understand psychology and the stages of development, uh, a newborn baby is is in a in great parts uh, um, a blank slate. This doesn't mean that they're completely blank, that they have no personality or anything like that. Because you can hear you can hear stories about the differences between different babies. My two children were different as babies. My daughter was very very quiet and patient. And I remember one time we were walking around and at the mall, and I we I don't know if it was when I was carrying her or my wife was carrying her. We must have brushed up in front um, against something, and I later noticed a scratch on her head, but she never made a noise about it. My son, on the other hand, was a bit different. Um, and, what, you know, but one thing I noticed is in the beginning of a, of a baby's life, they, um, their personality is very malleable. Um, and how you treat that child has a great deal of impact on that child's behavior in later life. And um, that continues on. How much goes on inside the womb, I don't really know. I'm not sure that science has gotten to the point where they can know something like that. But I think that there is a distinct difference between an embryo and a late-stage pregnancy or even a newborn child. Um, even if it's to the point where it's starting to look human. It's still not f developed enough that it can survive on its own. And if, 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 if there was a miscarriage, for example, yes, that would be a very traumatic thing. My wife had, a, um, she had a, a, what's called a, a mole pregnancy where the cells were trying to make something, but it was just a ball. Uh, there was no actual baby. And that was still traumatic for her to have to um, essentially have that aborted. Um, because she had really, really, really wanted that baby, but there was no baby to have. But she was very upset about that loss. And I get it. I get it. Um, so for me personally, I think that, you know, if and this is really kind of, even now, after decades of thinking about this, this is kind of a, a gray area for me. But I think that in situations where the parents don't want the child and they're going to mistreat the child or they're not going to be able to care for the child correctly, um, say, for example, um, the mother is a crackhead and um, the, the baby's going to get taken away by the state. I personally understand that there are going to be some people who will get through the foster care system or the adoption system and they'll come out okay. But the odds are against that. The odds are for that child becoming another statistic and another part of the problem instead of part of the solution. They will... Um, Yes, should, you might say, well, they deserve a chance, don't they? And I yes, they deserve a chance, but if they aren't being given a fair chance, they really haven't been given a chance at all, have they? If they have been put in a, into a situation <clears throat> that is going to tend to predispose them to be, becoming a criminal or even a psychopath, have they really been given a, a choice? <clears throat> Having people born into abusive families or having to go through the foster care system where they get to the point where they don't believe that anybody cares about them that the, and that they're so broken that they become uh, an abusive parent. These are all things that say to me that in cases where the parent 
is unable to care for their child or for one reason or other will hate their child, I don't really have an objection to an abortion, much less if the child is a product of rape or, um, or incest. I, I believe because of the potential genetic consequences for the child that abortion should at least be on the table. In the cases of rape, unless the mother and father, uh, whoever is going to be the, the daddy figure in the, in, the, in the picture, can separate themselves from the act and give all their love to that child, ignoring that the child was the product of rape. I personally believe that abortion should be used. I would hate to be raised by a mother who hated me because of what somebody did to her, but was not my fault. And I can imagine how traumatizing and how painful um, and even um, permanently damaging that could be. A lot of babies that are born to uh, addicts, and I don't know the statistics, so I can't say how many, but they're born with problems that are specifically caused by their parent mama's addiction. So I think that's a thing where abortion may need to be considered. Um, in the case of consensual sex between adults, um, that are not incestuous, not, and again, when I say consensual, I mean, they really both wanted to do it. If people are just being stupid and not using contraception, you might say, well, you know, they, they knew what the consequences were, they, so they should um, bear the child. Well, that's true, except for the fact that if that child is going to be born to parents who don't want it and won't take care of it properly and will be abusive toward it, it may be better off not to have that child be born at all. If the person is just using abortion as another form of, well, you can't really f call it prophylaxis or contraception. Um, if they're just using it kind of like as a, 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 a replacement for a prophylaxis, then I really have to, to question that. You know, people may give an argument, oh, well, I, I don't like the way a condom feels. Well, that's just rubbish. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean you shouldn't use it. Um, so I, I'm, I think serial abortions for somebody, you know, if you're going to be, if you're going to be careless, there's the morning after pill. You don't have to take that risk of getting pregnant because when the ba when the when it's just a few cells within the 24 hours or whatever after you've gotten pregnant, you're not killing a child. There is no child. It's just cells that have got no independent function to speak of. But still, you know. I would greatly prefer people who are being careless and not using contraception would use the morning after pill instead of waiting until the baby's partially formed and then killing it through abortion. Um, and I definitely believe in the case of where a woman's life, a mother's life is being threatened by that child's child being inside. And I, I have met women who want to get pregnant, even knowing that they could die as a consequence of the pregnancy. I've met them. I don't understand that. Why a woman would do that? Because if she dies, she's traumatizing the father of her children or fathers, and she's traumatizing all of her children that she's already had. She's, and to me, it's very selfish for a woman to take that risk, to gamble her own life just to get another baby. I think that's incredibly selfish.
or crazy or something. I don't know what it is. But I believe that a woman who is at risk of dying because of her pregnancy should have the option of saving her life by terminating that pregnancy. By killing that, ba that developing baby. That fetus or that embryo. I just cannot believe that it is fair to across the board deny abortion to everybody. Because I'll tell you what, when abortions were illegal in the United States, women would be permanently scarred by it. And I mean, don't mean just emotionally, I mean physically. Some women, because of the person that was performing the abortion, uh, didn't do it right. Maybe they were using the wrong tools or they didn't actually know how to perform an abortion uh, safely um, or they weren't, they didn't care. They were just in there for the money. Um, so women would be severely injured and sometimes even die as a result of abortions and they had no recourse to get medical help after an abortion because then they would be prosecuted as a criminal because of the abortion that they went through even though they were severely injured by the doctor. And, and maybe the doctor or whoever it was that was doing the abortion would be caught and punished as well. But the fact of the matter was is that it led the, the, the illegal status of abortion in the past and in other countries always leads to problems where uh, an illegal abortion uh, market or um, system springs up and it causes a lot of suffering and there's a lot of a higher cost obviously it's not going to be covered by insurance and if there are consequences those probably won't be covered by insurance and all, all kinds of negative consequences of making abortion illegal um so i i personally believe and it's up to you what you think but i personally believe for these and other situations um like, for example, if a baby is going to be born with um, disabilities that are beyond the ability of the, or, and willingness of the parent to cope with, uh, because often disabled children cause, are, are the reason parents get divorced. Um, and one person gets then uh, often saddled with the... Uh, child sometimes until adulthood when they uh, and if they can figure out how to raise them up to be independent sometimes they can't sometimes they're stuck with that child for the rest of their lives they have no uh, option and some of them will do it well and some of them will abuse their that adult child the, um, they will um, it, it's a, it can be a horrible experience in some cases so I think that the, really for all these reasons and more abortion should be left available to people and I'm sorry to those of you who believe that I'm wrong because you're not actually you're, you're only considering that unborn child you're not uh, considering the potential positive and negative futures of that child you're only considering the, the positive you're not being realistic about what could happen to that child if it is born into a situation that would make it wish it had been aborted. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great day.